but we give thanks for the Lord's presence and his peace every day. Our service for today will follow along in the uh, as projected on the screen. But before we begin our service, let's take a moment as we're able. Would you rise and just turn around and say hi? Send the peace of the Lord to those who are around. Our service begins with our opening hymn, Today Your Mercy Calls. As you're able, we rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We take a moment of silence for reflection on God's word and for self examination. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work, and the works of your hands I sing for joy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. How great are your works, O Lord! Your thoughts are very deep. Glory be to God on high. And on earth. Lord, be with you. We pray together our prayer. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant to us your humble servants, your holy inspiration, that we may set our minds on the things that are right, and by your merciful guidance accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture readings. Our Old Testament reading from the 14th for the 14th Sunday after Pentecost is from Ezekiel chapter 33, beginning with the 7th verse. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity, 
but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have we turn to the review of the catechism as we look at the sacrament of the altar. How can bodily eating and drinking do such great things? Certainly not just eating and drinking do these things, but the words written here, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. These words, along with the bodily eating and drinking, are the main thing in the sacrament. Whoever believes these words has exactly what they say, forgiveness of sins. From John chapter 6, verse 37, Whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, He who stands firm to the end will be saved. Luke chapter 1, verse 45, Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Luke chapter 11, verses 27 and 28. Blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nursed you. Jesus replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. And from John chapter 10, verses 27 and 28. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. Our epistle reading and also our text for tonight's message is from Romans chapter 13, beginning with the first verse. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a care to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is an authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is a servant, God's servant, for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them. Taxes to whom taxes are owed. Revenue to whom revenue is owed. Respect to whom respect is owed. Honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you're able, we rise for the Alleluia and our gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, Jesus put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. 
But whoever causes one of these little ones to believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for the temptations to sin, for it is necessary that temptation come. But woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of God, of my Father, who is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go to him to tell and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, Take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of a last. Amen. We continue at this time with our children's lesson. You may be seated, and we invite Josiah to come forward for our message. Is this on? Awesome. Uh, it's good to be with you all tonight, and I've brought a couple things with me. And you might be able to recognize what I'm holding here. One second. Didn't want them to be backwards. I've got these with me, the pieces of paper. Uh, but you might be able to tell that they are supposed to represent uh, what God has given us in his word. And he gave to Moses first as two stone tablets that might have looked something like this. And they're the Ten Commandments. And of course, what's written on here, uh, maybe it's supposed to represent Hebrew or uh, whatever the original language was, but it's, it looks a little bit like chicken scratch. Maybe like your doctor wrote this down when you went to visit him last time. Uh, but these are the Ten Commandments, or what they might have looked like. And like I said, these are the rules, the laws that God gave to his people. He gave them to Moses, and Moses wrote them down, and the Israelites used them. And we still use them today as Christians. We regard them as our... Uh, our moral code still. And uh, so they're still good, even though there are some other laws that God gave to his people in the Old Testament that Jesus, we know that he fulfilled those laws. So we don't uh, obey all those ceremonial laws like the sacrificial things that they would do. 
um, thanks to Jesus. But we do still have this moral code. But you know what can be a little difficult to remember all ten commandments sometimes. Uh, but luckily, Jesus made it a little bit easier for his people. And in the New Testament, uh, he boiled the Ten Commandments down to just one commandment. And Paul teaches us about that a little bit today in the readings that we just read from Romans chapter 13. And so Paul tells us this. He says, uh, you know all the commandments. Uh, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't murder. Uh, and all these other commandments, uh, they can all be summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. So that makes it a little bit easier to remember. All ten of those commandments, uh, some of them that we just listed, uh, but you might know them all. If not, I could tell you where to find them in the Bible. But they can all be summed up by that one commandment, to love. Uh, to love all your neighbors. And, um, of course, Jesus teaches us that our neighbors are everybody around us. Uh, it's all of humanity. It doesn't just include the people who live next door to you. Uh, and so he gives us the commandments, he gives us uh, a summary of all the commandments, and then God also, uh, he sends Jesus down, and he's the perfect example of living out those, that one commandment, which is to love your neighbor. Um, and so Jesus comes down, and he shows us that. He helps people. He cares for people who are rejected and forgotten. Um, he heals people which we don't have the power to do, but sometimes God does through us, and he definitely did at that time with Jesus. Uh, and ultimately, Jesus sacrificed himself for us. That was the ultimate display of love. Uh, and so now we've got the commandments. We've got a perfect example of how to live out these commandments. Uh, and so God has challenged us to do that. He says, go and uh, love God and love your neighbors. And if you do that, then you'll be following the law. We know that when we don't follow the law, there's a consequence. It's called sin, and it's the, or sin is what's called when we, when we disobey the law. And the consequence of that is death and brokenness in the world. Uh, and so if we fail to love our neighbors, then it's still committing a sin. But thankfully, we have a Father in heaven who still loves us perfectly, even when we can't love perfectly. And so he continues to offer us forgiveness, just like Jesus did at the time when he was uh, showing us how to love our neighbors. And so we receive this forgiveness. We know it comes through faith in Jesus. Uh, we know that he offers this forgiveness to everybody, and we know that God still loves the whole world, and he loves all of his neighbors, and we should too. Well, why don't we say a quick prayer thanking God for that now? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you love us, and that you continue to love us even when uh, we don't always love people around us. Help us to be more like you every day, loving our neighbors to the best of our ability, uh, and at the end of the day, help us to remember that you still love us even when we fail. Uh, Lord, help us love you more every day and those around us. I'll also pray in your son's holy name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Josiah. We continue with our sermon hymn, My Soul Now Prays.
God's grace and peace be multiplied unto each of you today from God our Father and from our risen Savior Jesus. Amen. Our text for today's message is from our epistle lesson from Romans chapter 13, read a few moments ago. Pastor, please join with me in a word of prayer. We pray. Heavenly Father, we pray, be with us as we come to your house to hear your word and ever be assured of the life and love and peace that Jesus alone brings. May we not only know that love and be assured of our salvation in Jesus, but empower us also, Lord, that we might share and declare and live that love and proclaim that love to the world. I pray now that the words of my mouth and meditation in my heart may it ever be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus, our Savior's name, we pray. Amen. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, have you ever gone, visited, spent time in Washington, D.C.? I know I have a couple of times. It's been many years. It's been since I was probably 14, 15 years old since I've been there. But I tell you what, I remember that time very well. What I remember isn't as much seeing the White House or the museums. What really stuck out in my mind is when I visited the memorials, like the Vietnam Memorial and other war memorials, and spent time there. If you look at the Vietnam Memorial, just to see all the names of those who died in service to the country, our country, that we live in. Or perhaps what maybe even more sticks out is Arlington Cemetery, in which looking at all the crosses going down row after row of graves of men and women who died in service for our country. And it makes me and it makes us as citizens aware of our great debt. They died so that we might live and have the freedoms that we have as a people. And that continuing debt we owe, it motivates us, you and me, to act as better citizens in this country. Well, the theme of our sermon rests on what God has done, first and foremost of all, and it invites our never-ending response to his love. Love that continues is the theme. And it reminds us that God gives, God's love gives our lives a purpose. So amazing and so grand that we can't draw up a list of things to do or to calculate when we enough is enough in serving. Christ paid the greatest debt of all, didn't he? For our sins in our place on the cross. Giving up his perfect life for us and for all people. And his death gives us a life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Savior and King. His love, his continuing love is his gift to us and to all. For it was Jesus who was punished for our evil, and God awards us his good, his righteousness through faith. His cross and his resurrection of Jesus provide God's gift of eternal life, abundant life now and eternally for all people through faith in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. God gives those in Christ the gifts of salvation and love in the mission to share his gifts and love with others, with all people. And yes, God has given us human authority and God-given responsibility to foster good. God's words call for the government for honesty and integrity. Civil authorities are ordained by God and are accountable to God, whether they realize it or not to commend what is right and to punish what is evil. They are to rightly serve God and people. Whatever good we see in human institutions, institutions is the result of the goodness of God. Our continuing love in response is to God's love, ultimately. And so we as God's people strive as citizens out of love for God and for our neighbors 
to serve him and others. God's law, he provides principles for our life. He commands his people, as we stated and talked about, the commandments not to murder or steal, not to sexually abuse or exploit people. God's natural law is written on the hearts of everyone and bears evidence in our conscience. And it's evident in creation as well. It leaves even the most corrupt and godless governments to have laws that in some way resemble the Ten Commandments. And yes, as God's people, we are called to respect government, to pray for them, to vote for people whom we believe would best serve God and his people, to pay taxes and duties, and meet the civic obligations that are there for us for human welfare and peace. Even though Christ has paid for the debt of our sin in full, in his love, we use our freedom to glorify God and to serve others as his people. Love of God and love of our neighbor, of others. As you put forth, very rightly, Josiah. Being a good citizen, though, isn't always easy, is it? Not only for you, but for all of us. Governments, just like citizens, just like you and me, are far from perfect. People, including Christians, are tempted to despise government. And I must sometimes, what comes out of my mouth is not always the best and the most respecting as it should for it. In Paul's time, people wanted to cheat on taxes, tolls, and debts. We're not much different than the people of then, are we? Well, thanks be to God, he continues to love us and all despite all our sins and all our wrongs. And Jesus demonstrates his love through action, even for those who were apart from him and enemies of God. He does it with an amazing love. It was like the story of a college professor who was having trouble pouring cement for his sidewalk in front of his house. A little neighbor boy continually came over and he'd put his footprints in the concrete. And finally the professor could take it no longer and he screamed at the young boy. He said, go home. And the little boy looked hurt and he looked up at the man and he said, don't you like little boys? And the professor said, I like little boys in the abstract, not in the concrete. Not a very good one, is it? We as God's people are called in faith to do more than observe the letter of the law. It's the good news of Jesus, our Savior, that grants an attitude of love, not only for him, but for others, that's to shine forth through all aspects of our life. God's love for others results in continuing action in all of our life. A young teenage girl named Mary came home and she said to her mother, I just have to get a new dress for the dance on Friday night. And Mary's mom recognized her daughter's sense of urgency, her desire. But she also reminded Mary that she didn't have to purchase new clothes for the dance. But Mary said, I have to. What she was really expressing was a strong desire, not a necessity. You know, we as God's people may use that word or those words have to in a similar way. Do we have to obey, honor, and love authorities and our neighbors? When we think about it, we often have to obey laws and authorities, such as our boss or our doctor, in order to avoid punishment or for health problems. But when God, through the Apostle Paul, writes and speaks of us loving God and loving others in Christ, He's speaking of how we are called to live in this broken world 
as a people of God, empowered by him. Thanks be to God, through Jesus, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, including you and me. Since he has satisfied the law perfectly in our place and in our stead through his life, through his innocent death, and through his resurrection. And his resurrection is proof of our forgiveness and freedom from the threats of the law. Out of his amazing love, he has set us free and given us life down eternally. Now that not so that we can do what we want, but instead be, live, and love as he's redeemed us to be through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now in Christ, he calls us and wants us to be able to approach him, to come to him, no matter how crushing our circumstances, our grief, or how bad our sins are, yours and mine. I was reminded in a devotion from Dr. Walter A. Meyer. He stated very clearly, may we ever remember these four foundations of faith. First, God shows no partiality. God's love is meant for all people, including you and me, no matter who they are. Secondly, we've all sinned, haven't we? Every single one of us and fall short of the glory of God. Third, God desires all people, no matter who they are, where they're from, to be saved. And last, that God so loved the world, he loved you and me and all people that he sent, not an angel or some messenger, but his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that means you and me. Jesus, thanks be to God, died for you and for me and for all. He, he wants all of us, all people, to live with him and for him eternally. He has help and healing for you and for all people, pardon for our sins, our transgressions, companionship in our loneliness, strength in our weakness, and love in any lovelessness that may be around us in our life, in our world. His Holy Spirit makes you and me and all who are brought to faith in Christ a new creation, blessed by joy and peace and his eternal love. When we, who are baptized into Christ Jesus, hear what St. Paul says in our text, when we behold the cross in which Jesus died to pay for our sins and the sins of the world and his glorious resurrection we're given a delightful desire by the power of the Holy Spirit that works in our hearts and minds as he empowers us through his word and sacrament not only to know his undeserved love but to share and declare it to all in all of our life by God's grace and power, may we all live lives more worthy of Jesus, whose life, death, and resurrection have set us free, that we might be his eternally. That's so that we might not only glorify God, but that others, too, may know his love and salvation as well. I pray, may God grant this unto each of us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the true faith unto life everlasting, through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and King. Amen. As you're able, we rise at this time as we sing our offertory, and the offering is brought forward.
we pray. O oh Lord, grant your people courage that with boldness we may speak your name in witness and warn sinners so that they may come to faith and repentance and so enjoy the forgiveness of their sins. Give your church wisdom and strength by your spirit that she may be steadfast and unmovable in your word and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, be present among your people to serve us with the gifts of your grace and grant that we may receive them with joy. Give to us faithful pastors and church workers who will minister to us in your name and strengthen our faith and life together as your baptized people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, give us good and honest leaders who will govern according to your word and will. Give us grace that we may not fail to pray for those who lead us and to act as good citizens and good neighbors to one another. Give peace to the nations and bring an end to violence, prejudice, and racism. Guide us to know and respect all life, from the infant in the womb to the youth beginning maturity and from the mature to the aged. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you send rain upon the earth and turn the seeds into plants rich with fruit for harvest. Accept our thanks and praise for your continued goodness in providing a good harvest and food for all. Give us wisdom so that we may use your resources wisely and extend your care to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you urge us to give special care and guidance to the young and to the, those new to the faith. Give us grace that we may not lead them into temptation or sin, but guard their faith by making known to them the full counsel of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, you are the strength of the weak, the healing of the sick, the comfort of those who grieve, and the peace of those near death. Hear us, O oh Lord, on behalf of those especially needing your, your strength, your blessing, and your care. We remember especially Dorothy Kruger, Beth Lynch, Mark Meyer, Fred Schwartz, Arlene Munth, Charlotte Wilson, Mandy Middlestead, Helen Olick, Dale Vogel, Warren Bormiller, Kathleen Pittman, Dolores Williams, Don Harris, Vicki Gerke, Cheryl Kleber, Roger Hansen, Clarence Purinan, Emily, Emily Rogers, Jerry Pitsky, Ken and Sandy Rosensky, Seth, Margaret Kruger, and those we name in our hearts. Grant them your care, your blessing, and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, grant comfort to those who mourn the death of loved ones. Comfort them with the assurance of life eternal for all who die in faith. Give them peace of mind and help us to assure them of your presence and ongoing care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise and thank you, O Lord, for your many blessings, especially for life and salvation in Jesus. We further thank you in celebration of 60 years of marriage for Roger and Ruth Reimer. We also thank you and praise you for the confirmation of our, our confirmants, our young men and women, tomorrow and those who have already been confirmed. We pray that you keep them and keep us all in your grace and care and in witness of your love to all, all our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, you've given the day for work and the night for rest. Bless all honest labor and industry and those in caring professions and all workers. Keep us in humility and guard us against pride and arrogance. Give to us the spirit of generosity that we may share with others the blessings that flow from our labors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, deliver us from pandemic and pestilence, from disaster and danger, and from a sudden death that kept in faith, we may be preserved through this life and in death be received into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, O Lord, who cry to you in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, whom with the Spirit and you are one God, 
and one Lord, now and forevermore. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our hymn, Shepherd of Tender Youth. We pray, O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, Before You, Lord, We Bow.
It's a joy to be with each of you in worship today. Uh, just a couple announcements, just a reminder, tomorrow there is no Bible class since we'll be having our confirmation, our second confirmation uh, uh, service uh, for the family as 10 confirmands will be confirmed tomorrow. Please keep them in your prayers as they make their promise uh, as, uh, to remain faithful to the Lord by his power, his grace throughout their life. And may we as well by his power and grace. Uh, we pray your blessings, the Lord's blessings upon your week ahead. May you have a very blessed week for him.